What's going on, Pokemon trainers? Welcome to episode 53 of Gotta Watch Them All, the podcast where we talk all things Pokemon before watching along with an episode of Pokemon the series starting all the way back at episode 1. But today, we are watching episode 53, Princess vs. Princess. I'm one of your hosts, Ken Pescator, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. We're back from the dead. Dude, back. We're back. We're back from it. Lavender Town. Yes, it was Lavender. Dude, it's going to get spooky time soon. I, I can't wait to rock some some Lavender Town themed stuff. I have the, uh, the 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 Pikachu Halloween outfit stuff from Pokemon Center that I decorate with. So, Ooh. yeah, I love that stuff. Anyway, today is Thursday, September 27th, 2018. And uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start things off. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Check ours out over at patreon.com slash gotta watch them all, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron exclusive discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And I want to give a huge shout out to our show supporter tier patrons, Brittany, Jay, Jessica, Keith, Matt, M. Pitts, Terry, and David. Thank you guys so very much. We really you appreciate guys your support. Yeah, you guys are totally awesome. Thank you so much. On today's show... A new mythical Pokemon has been released in the most unorthodox manner possible. We'll get into that. We're in week two of the Ultra Bonus that was unlocked in Pokemon Go. We'll break out all the things that are going on this week in that game. Dragon Majesty TCG has been out in full swing. Adam, I know you've opened a bunch of packs. I can't wait to talk about that. A little little outside of the box here, but two new Sun and Moon mangas have been released. And uh, I haven't read a manga, or Pokemon manga in particular, in a long time, but my I don't son think I've bought ever some. One. I got some for my son a couple months ago, and uh, you know, hey, I, I might, I might give this a shot because I was looking at the previews. It was it looked pretty cool, so that's why we're going to talk about it on the show. I don't, have you ever read a manga? Nope, not not a Pokemon one. It's all backwards. Yeah, it's weird. I, I've read like Mega Man Battle Network ones, but oh, dude, this that, podcast that's, ain't about that. That's nerd tread right there, though. <laughs> <laughs> there's two distributions available right now pretty much when this is wrapping up uh one of the distributions will wrap up we'll talk about the dates but you know in the next week or so you should still be able to get two distributions uh from different retailers uh new details about pokemon let's go have been kind of trickling out we are less than a month and a half away sort of so we are getting close so it's i can i can taste it i'm very excited for pokemon let's go and then finally, we'll wrap up with our watch along of uh, anime episode number 53, Princess vs. Princess, which uh, was a great episode. I can't wait to rewatch it again and again because. Uh, and again and again. It, it was really good. There's some, there's some really good moments in the show. But anyway, Meltan, the mythical Pokemon. Adam, uh, give me your hot take. This is a new Pokemon. We don't know its dex entry number. Uh, it was rumored that it was meta tagged at 891 in Pokemon Go. That's how they released this thing. Is a ditto. What, what is your hot take on this? My hot take is that it's a basic looking mythical Pokemon, like very basic. Absolutely, I agree with that 100. percent Like they didn't try. Like, like <laughs> not not they didn't try, but it's like an unknown hung out with a ditto and a Magnemite. <sighs> You see, and they all kind of just were talking. They're like, "Hey, let's get together and feel all right." If yeah, exactly. If you haven't <laughs> seen this thing yet, get out from under the, your your Pokemon rock and look at this it's thing everywhere. online. But it's a di- a silver Ditto body. It's got a little electrical wire, red electrical wire sticking out of its butt for a tail, and it's just a a nut with a little black eye in it. It's just. When when I think mythical Pokemon, I don't know. I think graceful, triumphant, you know, uh, just ethereal, you know, that kind of that kind of uh, you know mystique. But this thing does not scream mythical Pokemon to me in any way. But that being said, I love the design. I love it. I think it looks awesome and animated in Pokemon Go. It's little wiggle and stuff like that. It looks very curious. It looks very kind of you know, reluctant almost and shy. I, I don't know. I th- there's, I think this thing could potentially have a lot of personality and I, I can't wait for it to, you know, this is the, this is the Pokemon that will be bridging the gap between Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go. So hopefully you'll get to know this thing a little bit better in Pokemon Let's Go because I, I know that, you know, people were ranking on this thing's design, but I definitely love it, but it doesn't scream mythical to me at all. 
So I definitely no. get you on that. Like it, it seems just like doesn't... a stage one for something else, but yeah, it definitely looks like it has something to evolve to. Like it would go somewhere, but they released this through Pokemon Go, like I said, as dittos, but they came up on the map. They kind of did this after Chikorita Community Day. I don't want to get too long in the tooth on Pokemon Go, but they introduced Professor Oak to Pokemon Go, and now Professor Willow and Professor Oak have been working together, uh, and you know that's when they they Professor Oak recognizes, oh yeah, from some old text that I read, yeah, I remember this Pokemon. It's it's here to stay. It's in the game. It's official. So it's it's good. I, I don't know. Could this be the middle? You know, eight ninety one. Could this be just some random Pokemon Dex entry number? I don't know. But this thing's real. I don't know. I really dig it. I dig the design. And uh, I'm excited for Pokemon Let's Go, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, yeah, there's so much hype behind it. So it, it really is. Now let me let me read you a little bit of the info that it about this Pokemon. This is this is straight from Pokemon uh, Let's Go.com. Most of Meltan's body is made from liquid metal, and its shape is very fluid. It can use its liquid arms and legs to corrode metal and absorb it into its own body. Now that's really cool. It's like magnetic putty. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like that's just yeah. really cool. Meltan generates electricity using the metal it absorbs from outside sources. It uses this electricity as an energy source and also as an attack that can be fired from its eye. So its eye is like literally like the eye of Sauron and can shoot lightning bolts out of it. <laughs> so it's like the, the metal blob that so cool. attracts metal and electricity and then uses like a solar zap cannon beam or something. Yep, and then finally it says, Clearly a curious Pokemon, Meltan is very expressive and shows an interest in all kinds of things. And you definitely see that in the animation from Pokemon Go because it just kind of wiggles around, does a little shake, and kind of looks like it's peering from left to right. Out of nowhere, we just absolutely bizarre. It, you know, there was leaks in Pokemon Go where this thing was kind of in Kecleon's spot. We thought it was a placeholder. We thought it was a glitch. We didn't, we didn't know... If you want more coverage on the whole Pokemon Go side of this, check out our other podcast, Lured Up, uh, that we do. Then we're going to be going, we're taking a big dive into it next week. Uh, next episode of Lured Up, we're definitely going to talk more about Meltan. But I don't know, man. I think I, it, it's exciting when they announced new Pokemon. And it's cool that Pokemon Go was the platform for this because Pokemon Company International does not take releasing a Pokemon very lightly. Like, this is a big deal. So, yeah. And, cool. and for them to just throw it into. Pokemon Go, yeah. Well, hey, you know man, what I mean. Just uh, Pokemon Go is paying them bills, <laughs> right? It is. They just hit two billion dollars in revenue. Two billion. I know. I'm like, oh my goodness, all those Poke coins I keep buying. So awesome. So awesome. <laughs> all right, we'll dig into Pokemon Go briefly here. Uh, we are in week two of the Ultra Bonus. Mewtwo is everywhere. It's now a regular legendary boss. Deoxys is our new EX raid boss. Adam has a raid pass already for next couple days right and you for your deoxys yeah my brother's birthday so sick so absolutely sick i'm like uh, who do i invite my yeah. brother's working well you have to be uh ultra or best friend exactly so. i've got like you and like <laughs> terry wolf and, and jersey J. <laughs> yeah <I don't laughs> if you guys are willing to drive up here i mean i don't know if they're flying to canada eh, just to raid with you <laughs> <laughs> wait you're in canada right <laughs> uh you're pretty much in canada yeah the northern <laughs> southern yeah, New Hampshire, somewhere around there. <laughs> but our, and then and then finally, a, a little bit of a disappointing note: October Community Day in Pokemon Go is going to be Beldum, Beldum and not a Ghost type. What? <laughs> yeah, epic, uh, epic fail on that. It tells Missed me one thing. No, 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 no. It tells me one thing: there's going to be a separate Ghost event Halloween for Halloween, without a doubt. Well, yeah, like we it, know that. But I was holding on to my 100% Haunter, fully powered up. Ready to evolve into a Gengar the second it hit Community Day. Well, maybe they'll do something on Halloween. Evolve it on Halloween. Get a special move. Who knows? Maybe, oh, my gosh. I don't know. But Bel Beldum is cool because Metagross is getting a uh, Meteor Mash move, and it's going to shake up the meta a little bit. So that's that's cool. I'm into it. But And Adam's coming to Jersey for that one. Holla. Holla. I already requested the time off. You're so good. You're so good. All right. Adam. Dig into this. Dragon Majesty. Uh, smaller set, 70 cards, uh, plus the secret rares. 20 dragon types, 6 GX cards, 2 Prism Stars, uh, 1 being Victini, which is pretty sweet. Uh, 6 Full Arts. What is your experience with this deck? And I know you've you've been out to some events. Are people starting to utilize this expansion already? Well, so this expansion starts 
to be able to be used in tournaments tomorrow. Tomorrow okay. becomes tournament legal. There's not been too much talk about all the cards from the set. Like nobody's interested in a lot of stuff. I myself have seen like Lapras is really cool because okay. it has Aqua Bullet. It does 20 to the active and 20 to a bench Pokemon. And spread is something we haven't seen in recent times. So I don't know. I'm, I'm super excited to see what, what's, what people can come up with with a lot of the newer stuff. Aren't a lot of these dragon cards kind of throwbacks a little bit? Like, hadn't they been released in that form, just different art in the past? Yeah, some of them. Um, like Rough Skin. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm I'm digging the art on this Victini Prism Star, which is pretty sweet. And, you know, I, I have not, in a competitive setting, played with Prism Star cards yet, you know, besides playing, like, casually at home. So it's like I, I kind of want to get out to an event so I could see really the the, the shake up in, well, the, in the biggest TCG meta. The biggest one right now is Deontay. Yep, Beyonce. Because what? it's just well, you don't say <laughs> no, Deontay. It's brutal. It allows all your fighting Pokemon to do twenty extra damage. Like yeah, it's sick. It, it's so broken because you play Brooklet Hill and then you just search for it, and it's on your bench instantly. It's really hard to combat. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm talking about. Because I'm running a deck with a bunch of basics that have, you know, 50 or 70 HP. and Oh, forget it. Plus, you know, yeah. Yep. And then the, then they have Baby Buzzle, and that thing does 30 damage already. So that's 50. Knocks out all my spinner acts. Oh, you're running the area dose deck. Yep. And then if uh, they play uh, the Professor Kukui or whatever, it, that's 70, and it one-shots my Salandits. And there is a new Salandit in the Dragon's Majesties, and it allows you to search your deck for basic Pokemon, so... But it has 10 less HP, so it's like, I don't know. Mm. Do I run the one that allows me to go get more bench Pokemon, or... I don't know. Well, th- this Prism Star Victini is cool. It's it's two two fire energies for an attack called Infinity, 20 base damage. And it does 20 damage for every basic energy in your discard pile. So, you know, for a 90 hit point little, you know, basic, cute Victini, you, you could... You could get some good output out of this thing. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like what you know, what cards would combat with that? You know, you've got T- I think TV reporter. So you discard a card, draw three. So you discard an energy, draw three. Exactly. Yep. Just to pump your discard with energies and just reinforce that. And then they have the the Blaine. I think it's Blaine. Yeah. Whatever he allows for every fire Pokemon you have in play, you draw two cards. So if you had a field full uh. of six of them, you draw twelve cards. Like what? Yes, sick. It's awesome. And then we're talking about Dragon Majesty here. This hasn't feels like it came out yesterday. It's only been out, I don't know, a couple weeks. And Lost Thunder is already going to be up for pre-order pretty soon. And this expansion Oh, it has, is up for pre-order on uh, Pokemon.com. Is it really? Oh, jeez. Yeah, I just saw it, and I'm like, are you serious? Oh, my it says October God. 29th. <laughs> yeah, it comes out November 2nd. It's over 200 cards in the set. Like, this is the biggest expansion ever. I don't know why they're doing this to people's wallets, but uh, if you're a collector, this is this one's going to hurt because that's a big set. That is a lot of cards, but some of these cards are sick. Poker Beach has already kind of previewed a bunch of stuff, and, you know, they had the Japanese leak, well, you know, it's got to be months ago already, where we, where we got to see this set. So yeah, I know is this is where we're going to see the, the tag team GXs? No, not yet. The tag teams, I think, aren't hitting until, like, February. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, the tag teams are still way off. This is the set that's, like, I think it has Gen 5 stuff. This is... I remember you, months ago, being excited for this when we saw that leak on Poke Beach because... Yeah, the, the electric stuff. Yeah. It's going to push hard for electric Pokemon. Yeah, so... So it's, it's going to put electric on the map, but also make fighting more viable, even though fighting is the best... At the moment, I got dude. I got I got to get back out to events. You know, I just moved. If you if you weren't aware, I just moved. That's why our schedule has been a little screwy. Just bought a house. Where I'm still I'm in the living room. That's why this is still boomy. I haven't set up our studio yet. But I'm driving to work the other day, and I've already passed it twenty times, and only noticed it for the first time today in a strip mall. There's a card place that's had tables set up and everything inside. I drove by, almost swerved on the road. I was like, ah, I gotta stop by this place. So tomorrow I'm off. I'm gonna stop in, but. I'm so excited. I have a local card shop in town that was big and it hosts events. So I'm very That's excited. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't, normally I'd have to drive 
you know, half an hour out to go to my, you know, Jinx Collectibles, which is a great spot in Matawan, New Jersey. And uh, now this is, I don't even know the name of the joint. I just saw, you know, the sign, trading cards and all that. Looked inside. I saw toys and posters. I was like, yes. Can't wait to check it out. So I'll report back on that. But yeah, I got I got to get in front of a, in front of some cards stat because I have not played competitive, even com- casual competitive in in a minute. So I got I to gotta get back on it. All right, Pokemon Center. This now, I was on Pokemon Center like a week and a half ago. And I, I was like, let me let me start writing these show notes out and everything. And all this product came out. So I, I noted it all. And then before we recorded, I just jump on. I'm like, let me just make sure that hasn't been anything else released. And what does Pokemon Center do? Bam. Release they hit like, more. <laughs> it's like, there's so much stuff. And, and so I just want to run through a couple of the highlights that are available right now. It is getting towards the holiday season. So, you know, the, these Pokemon Center reports could be uh, a good, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge to get some ideas of gifts because... Something like this Nendoroid Lana figure, it's 50 bucks, but these figures are insane. I got a chance to see some of the Figma figures in person, and I was super blown away. And I know these Nendoroid ones are exceptionally high quality too. And it's like, man, $50 for a figure, but then you look at it and you're like, dude, this is like an art piece. If you collect these things, you can get this one now. Uh, and a whole ton of new pins came out. There's a, a Reggie pin set, like the it's like Ooh, the Reggie Trio. Just a reminder of how I was going to buy that, that. Was. dude. It's seventeen. It's nineteen bucks. I would. I yeah. Pay me to take that, please. But I do like the. Uh, there's a Litwick Lampant and Chandelure three pack of pins. I, I'm a fan of these Pokemon. I like their design. I think they they look spooky and elegant, and you know it's, that's kind of relevant for going into Halloween. So I like that. But the real cool thing that they released, and I love these, and I have uh, I have a couple, are the Pokemon doll line with uh, it's the small kind of like chibi style Pokemon, and they just released a whole slew of new ones. All the new, all the original starters, Poliwhirl, Gengar. There's a Snorlax, Mew. They are the cutest thing. I, I got to get Melissa a couple of these uh, Snorlax to throw around the house, but um, I'm a sucker <laughs> for plush. That. If you know me, man, I'm a sucker for plush. There's way too much plush in this house. Yeah, I'm gonna you know this holiday if these are still around, I'm gonna I'm gonna I definitely. These are good stocking stuffers. They're only like 13 bucks or something like that. And they're small. They're like six inches. So five and a half, six inches. Cute little stocking stuffers. But I totally dig these. And uh, and then the chandelier pins are the standout for me. What do, what do you like here? I honestly, the Snorlax was my favorite. Yes. Like, and I'm not even like a huge fan of the Snorlax. That's the one that got me. It's so cute. His ears look so cute. <laughs> And then, honest, I'm not gonna lie. I legitimately got distracted when I saw the thunderclap pre-release, like the pre-order. I was like, "Oh, geez. so this is live now?" Yeah, it's right there. No, I. Yeah, add to pre-order. Add to cart. Pre-order. Oh goodness gracious! Yeah, it's added to my cart. Go to cart. Pre- oh, pre-order. I'm checking until out the 20- now. Oh, geez. yeah. One touch <laughs> checkout. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not today. I get paid oh. tomorrow. Oh man, that's dangerous. Yep. That is so dangerous. Oh, All right, but God. you said you like reading these mangas. Well, it's it's I, I I used to be into manga, you know, back in the day, and my which was son, a Wednesday, yeah, which was a Tuesday, I think. No, but my son <laughs> got a couple of the the Pokemon mangas, and he was into them. And when I kind of saw these, they typically don't promote this stuff on Pokemon dot com. You just they they have releases, but you just end up seeing them at the bookstore. You don't really hear about them. But I guess they're really pushing the the whole Sun and Moon line because the anime has been doing so well for Sun and Moon. But what I thought was cool here was each book is done by different artists. And the second book that I'll mention here, it was, I think, the same person wrote it that drew it, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, two different storylines, Pokemon Sun and Moon Volume 2 and Pokemon Horizon Sun and Moon Volume 1. So this Horizon is a whole new... A uh, whole new storyline and everything. It doesn't follow the game or the show. It's like its own thing, which I thought was pretty cool. And Team Skull and everything is in that. So it's just, I don't know. I, I think manga is, is underrated. And it's like uh, just another medium, another form of Pokemon content. I know they do really well. There's a whole, you know, like two shelves of it at my local Barnes & Noble. But you've never peeked at any of these? Nope. Some of the stories are heavy duty. I remember like looking through some of the ones that my son have had in the 
I, I just remember it like there being some like <laughs> heavy battle scenes and like Pokemon getting injured. And my, my son was like, this is crazy. You know, Pokemon getting hurt. Like, so I don't know. I might give these a try because uh, the art just looks pretty awesome. Guzma looks fantastic in this image. Guzma's a boss. He is a boss. He actually is a boss. All right, Pokemon, let's go. You on the hype train? Dude, I already traded in my Switch. And I have the other, I have the EV Pikachu pre-ordered. What? Yeah. You didn't tell me you did that. That's awesome. I swear I told you. <laughs> I didn't know. Maybe I forgot. But that's awesome. You forgot. That's so awesome. You decided to go EV, huh? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went EV. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. A lot of stuff has been coming out. There's been more. There was a Nintendo Direct. All this stuff happening. November 16th is the launch of the game, right? So we're, we're getting close. But... They drop a bomb confirming no more HMs. You don't have to learn cut anymore. So now there's special moves, special techniques. Actually, they're calling them secret techniques in game where your companion Pokemon, so your Pikachu or your Eevee, will now know these moves that used to be behind the HM paywall. <laughs> like, you know, you'll just learn, you'll, your companion Pokemon will know them. How do you feel about this? Does this change the way you explore the Pokemon world? No, it just means you can do what you need to do faster. Yeah, that pretty much, right? You just can do it. Because <laughs> for a completionist standpoint, like, I have to go through the whole game to get Surf and yeah, then yeah. Go, go back, back. Yep. to where he was. Like, oh, God. So time-consuming. The conversation I was having with a buddy of mine about this was, you got to remember, they're introducing Pokemon Go players and casual players to what could be their first RPG and the thought of playing through a game and having to backtrack just to get to, like, a new area may not be appealing to the masses as it would be to, like, a core RPG fan. So I kind of understand why they would do this to prevent... And again, this kind of plays into no wild encounters. Like, you see the encounters ahead of time. They're trying to kind of, I guess, coddle is a bad word to use, but, you know, make it a much softer and forgiving experience through an RPG... And it'll probably make the game more enjoyable and fun, even for hardcore players, because you could just progress. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's just very interesting. I, and I'd imagine that if they're doing it in Let's Go, this probably means, do you think in the core 2019 game that HMs are going to remain off the menu? I don't think so. Well, <laughs> but if they're trying to... 